Welcome to this instruction video in which I will show you how to control the shape of bond wires you model in Amphis wire. Everything about controlling the shape of bond wires you find also in the user manual that you can download from our website. What you see here is a file prepared that you can also download from our website at the same location as also this video. So we see here we have loops of different shapes and also strange numbers indicating uh, how the shape sh must be. Let's have a look at the definition of this loop shape. Here we see a loop and the loop is defined by the center line of the wire and in order to be able to select this, you must have this wire curve layer uh, unlocked. Normally, when you create a wire, it's like this, it's locked, and you have to unlock this, and then you are able to select the center line of the wire. Then you see the control points of the curve, and when you deselect, the control points disappear. You can make them stay permanently by clicking here, show object control points. Now they stay. These control points you can modify manually and you will change the center line, but the 3D object of the bond wire is not updated. So it's not a good idea to do that. Also, when you just move a little bit the wire definition object by pressing Alt and arrow key, you see your modification is gone. So it's better to do it using the loop shape dialog, the loop parameters dialog. So let's click the wire def object and go to loop parameters. Then we see these numbers here. These numbers indicate where these points have to be placed. The scale ranges from minus 10 above the source bond to 10 about the, above the destination bond. And we can just modify the numbers here. For instance, we can put it to 10 and the last point will move uh, just above the destination point. Also the midpoint here we can change to let's say 3. Okay, we can again move this a little bit back. So you can just play around. You can also add additional points. You can add Uh, here a point and you see between these two points you will have now a straight line. You might wish that but recommended typically is to have only three or exactly three support points. Okay, that's already everything about the loop support points. Then we have all the support points for the foot. The scale is different so the scale is now one tenth of the wire diameter. So if you put the value of 10, this is one times the diameter in direction in bonding direction. Let's try this. We select the wire definition object. Oh, let, well, let's first control turn on the control points here. Select the wire definition object and call the foot parameters dialog. Here we again have these support points. The first support point is as at minus 12, the second is at 0, then we have one at 6 and one at 18. We can make the foot longer, for instance put it to here, so then we put the first value to minus 20, like this. You can make here the radius smaller by decreasing the distance between these two points. We can just increase this value and decrease this value. Okay, you see already now that you get in trouble here. Especially for shorter bond wires, you might have this occasionally. And then you have to move these two points further apart. Let's do this again. 
So you can just increase again until you don't experience this issue anymore. Okay, still not good. Okay, this can really, so overlapping surfaces are an issue when you do finite element simulation. Typically you don't manage to, to get a working model out of that. Okay, now we're again fine. Okay, yeah, that's already everything here. Then we have additionally the same for ball bonding wires. The scale is just different. It is in vertical direction. It starts at zero on the surface of your substrate and 10 is the height of the loop. And we can have a look at the support points here. One is at zero, one at five and one at seven. We can change this. Again, we select the Y definition object. We go to foot parameters here. We increase it to nine, for instance. And yeah, it's now moved upwards. It's longer in vertical direction now. We can make the radius a bit larger by moving this point down. Okay, if you want to make it further larger the radius, you have to move this point. Then you need to go to loop parameters here. And for instance, this would be this point here. No, which one? I think it is this one. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So that's already everything about the loop shape from in the side view. Now we have another topic, this is the shift parameters when you look in a top view to the wires. This is now another file you can also download at, from the same place as you find this video on our website. So when the feet are rotated, the bond wire loop might be shifted to the side and how much the shift is, is defined by the shift parameters. We, here we have three times the same bond wire with the same angles, the same length, but each time the loop is in a different position because the shift parameters have been adjusted. So what we do, we can try to adjust these uh, shift parameters. Now let's just first explain what these do. Here is this blue line indicating uh, where the support points of the loop will be placed. So I turn on again the support points and we see all the support points of this center line of the wire are placed on the blue line. One is here, one is here and one is there is here. Three support points. And when you shift the blue line by adjusting these parameters, you shift also the support points and by this the wire center line and you get the different shapes of the wires. Let's not try it. These are under loop parameters. Here we have shift A and shift B. And we can just increase it here. It will change the loop shape. Okay, the blue line here will not change because this is uh, not linked to the uh, geometry this I have drawn manually. Or we can put it to zero and also this to zero. And now we see there is no shift between the line where the support points are. They are now all on one line between source and destination, which is not so reasonable, but it's good for il illustration what it means. Okay, I propose that you just play around with all these parameters, that's already everything, and you try to fit the shape you have with your real bond wires, and it might be that you not can perfectly shape uh, fit it, so if you have special shapes in your application, I would be curious to know. Maybe future releases of Amphis Wire can implement some more advanced possibilities to shape the bond wire. So just let us know. Thanks for watching.